conducting several training of Kenyan athletes in the wake of you know mental health that is affecting a lot of people, not only sportsmen, but even general uh, citizens as well. And of course, we're going to be keeping an eye on the same. Right now, as you speak, Kenyan football, it looks like it's an amaze. The tussle going on between Football Kenya Federation and government, especially Minister of Sports, with regards to you know the legitimacy of the federation running the league. We saw the CS for Sports, Dr. Amina Mohammed disbanded the federation and formed a caretaker committee. We've seen what's going on right now as we speak. Of course, the case is before the court, and of course, uh, we shall be dwelling into the same and see uh, what is the end product. But a lot of people saying that uh, what the CS did is in the best interest of football. I know others have contrary opinion, but we have a big show lined up. We will be dwelling into the same and discuss the intricacies pertaining to the same. So Robert is joining us. So good to see you, man. How are you? It's been great to be here. I'm doing great, man. And of course, we have a big man in the studio, Dave Atale, a man who played uh, previously for Task FC and KCB. And of course, he's a great soldier. He's been doing a lot, you know, offering much to the society in terms of you know, providing mental health awareness and inspiration. A man whose story can be written in several books, but it won't be completed. It's glad he's joining us this particular afternoon. Dave, good to see you, man. Good afternoon, bro. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me once again. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. The last time you were here, I think, was uh, a year down the line. 2020, yeah. 2020. And it's good to see you in good state of health. Yeah, Everything yeah. is all right. Yeah. We're just rekindling what we were speaking about in 2020, yeah. the Kenyan football. Yeah. What's your take with regards to what is happening right now? My take is the same thing that I had in 2020, and I've had it for quite some time. And the thing that just baffles me is the way as a country and as Kenyans who love football and who support football and people who are involved in football, they don't want to accept the reality of the state of how our Kenyan football is so bad to an extent, sometimes it's even embarrassing sitting down and talking about it. And now things are just coming up to light to see that what I was talking about and what I've been saying for so many years about integrity in our Kenyan football that is lacking and has always lacked is being shown right now. Why is the government right now stepping in to try and correct what is happening? It shouldn't get to that state. It should start with us our integrity. Let's love the game and make sure that everything that we are doing is for the best interest of the fans, the players themselves, and let's enjoy the game. So from a journalistic perspective, you've seen what's going on, a game of musical chairs between Football Kenya Federation and the Minister of Sports, the tussle that is underway. We've seen intervention uh, from CAF, Confederation of African Football and World Football Governing Body, FIFA, writing a lot of pronouncements saying that, you know, uh, they should mediate, the two entities should come together, sit on a table and see the way forward, if possible, normalization committee. I don't know, do you think Kenyan government will heed to the concerns from FIFA? I, I, I don't think so, I don't think so, because now it is becoming a situation where they, it is the taxpayers' money which Football Kenya Federation is being asked to account for. It is not uh, FIFA money, it's not the Football Fed, Kenya Federation money. It is taxpayers' money that they were given and they need to account for that. And you look at this, it has been a perennial problem from back in the day. I think if we go way back to the Kenneth Matiba time, in 78, we had the same same problems. You come in 88 with the Karauri also coming in as a caretaker committee. It was the same same problem. So it is a problem for me majorly. It's all about accountability. When you have been given a certain sum of money, the shareholders, the taxpayers want accountability for that money. And if you don't account for, for it, the public will come for the government. They'll ask the government question, and the government has also to answer those questions. And the way they are going to answer those questions is to look at the books of Football Kenya Federation. And you should account for what you're given by the government. It's, it's that simple. It's that simple. Because at the end of the day, it, it's like a, a scenario where you give your child 2000 to go to the supermarket to buy groceries. If the child comes back from the supermarket, he or she must have a receipt. I bought four loaves of bread, I bought sugar, I did this, this, and this, and the balance is 100 shillings. It should reflect in that. So if you have been given money, account for it. If you have booked a flight to South Africa, you have booked a flight to Comoros, 
It is just simple. Tell us you booked KQ flight A13 from here to South Africa. I had 27 people on board. This is the amount of money that was paid. But if you give people ambiguous statements, people will not buy it. It's that simple. You played football before, and maybe times at which you featured for the sides you featured for KCB and Tasca is not like the current times. But whatever is saying that you know accountability and you know trying to uh, state what really happened and like giving generalized statements, isn't that the case from where you stand? Yeah, and just adding on what he's just said, accountability, transparency, and integrity. Yes. You need to have transparency in each and everything that you're doing so that people can see that the funds that you're getting, that they're being used correctly. But the problem now you find is, if right now I would go back to our national team, we've had about five coaches, right? Yeah. Five coaches in a very short period of space, um, time. Yeah. And if you look at, for example, someone like Adele Amrush, why do we have to owe someone like that a lot of money during the time that he was here as the manager of the national team? So it just shows you that accountability is not there in our Kenyan football. Transparency is not there. Integrity is not there. So even the person who's been questioned, who's the head of FKF, every time he cannot give you something that is, you can see with your own eyes, transparency, that this is what the money that he's been getting yes. and the fruits of that money. What I mean by that is, if you are being given that kind of money and we have youth teams and they are performing, and you can see, even if you are going to a tournament and we get beat 5 nil, 4 nil, but we can see there is progress, you'd at least say, he's doing his job. But right now, if you look at the national team, can you count how many players that have been selected each and every time that the national team is being no called? Consistency. There's no consistency. Uh, even, even at, uh, uh, when you look at our, our coaches, uh, you look at, uh, I think Adela Amrush was in 2012. Mm -hmm. Adela Amrush, uh, 2012, 2013, there, 2014. Then we brought in Bobby Williamson. Yes. And you realize that every time uh, the federation changes its head, they also change the manager, forgetting the law. Realize that Adela Amrush contract came to an end because the former regime had hired him. The new regime comes in, then they terminate the contract. He goes ahead to the court of arbitration for sports. He gets to be paid uh, a lot of money because it's you who broke the the contract and all that. But then, when you look at all these scenarios, look at the when the report came out. Mm -hmm. You look at. Uh, the that report on the finances and everything this federation has 14 bank accounts for what purpose <laughs> why should out is that have you confirmed yeah it from yeah the it's the report it's from the report itself you can count the report it's written in the report that i've made the cs to bring in the committee and uh, disband the football kenya federation why should you have 14 bank accounts for what purpose? You realize, and this money, like, if you are going to be truthful to us and tell us everything that is happening, we need to see how much money you send to these clubs, how much money you spend in the national team, how much money you use in administrative costs. See where people hide also how they are stealing this money. You have, I think, we said 53 employees mm -hmm. at the Football Kenya Federation, 53 employees. In these 53 employees, how are they paid? See that? So if money comes in and you tell us money goes for administration costs, we need to know to the last cent of how these administration costs are being covered. And if you don't give us that, people will come on your neck and say you're actually stealing money.
After the international break, Kenyan football was supposed to continue FKF Premier League, national super leagues uh, across the country. A lot of fixtures were supposed to be played, but after that pronouncement by FKF Kayatega committee that football is on break for two weeks mm -hmm. before it resumes, where does this leave a, a player, a footballer who relies on football to earn his daily bread? As someone who played football, do you f empathize with them? Very. In fact, actually, I'm quite uh, connected with some players in the national team. And if you hear the way they are speaking right now, they're afraid on what's going to happen. Because now they're thinking, if football in Kenya, let's say we are banned by FIFA, people are trying to look where they're going to get their livelihood from. So that's something that is really alarming for players who don't even know how tomorrow yes. is looking for them. Because we're in a very, very deep state of where everything is up in the air. I think this is where also the Kenya Footballers Welfare Association comes in. Because if they are an organization good enough as they claim to be, and dealing with the players' welfare and everything, this is a scenario where they could be in to talk about the plight of the players, to talk about <coughs> what players are going through. And if all the problems that our players are having at the moment, and also which they have had and they will continue to be having, this is the time when we could have their leaders coming out and saying, in this two-week span, this player who plays for Madara United will not get his allowance. See that his contract does not allow him to be off football for two weeks. So how is this player going to be taken care of? Now, without them coming on board and talking about that, everybody will forget about them. Because everybody, when this was brought now, we are talking about it here. And also the court of public opinion is also running with it. And in the court of public opinion, no, we need the FIFA ban to get our football together but for the player everybody is forgetting about him just on what he's talking about the the is it the kenya welfare association yeah, kenya, kenya, kenya football yeah, welfare association yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. yes exactly yeah let's just be realistic Re yes let's not bite around the bush here there's no integrity in that association as well yes so you find you guys have decided to call a spade a spade, not no. a big spoon. Yeah, no, <laughs> let's just call the that's reality. reality. That's, that's the reality. <laughs> that's the reality, yeah. We, we had an example of how many examples of players have we had? Maybe someone has got a very bad injury, they cannot go back to football. Kenya Welfare Association, they're not involved with them. So what do they normally do? And this is what thing that I was saying to you. All about Kenyan football, we have cartels in all kinds of angles. And everyone who gets a position or into gets a position to run something, all they are doing is thinking about themselves. Yes. And they forget why they are there in the first place. If it's not for the Kenyan footballers, the Welfare Association wouldn't be there. If it's not for footballers, FKF wouldn't be there. You so see, it cuts across it the, cuts the, across. the road. Yeah, it cuts across everywhere. Yes. You see, so. it cuts across everywhere. And if you try and look, I was quite stunned. And this thing just made me feel really bad about the state of Kenyan football. Yeah. I've never seen an FKF president or a president of any football federation trying to tell the manager what kind of players they should be in the national team. Yes. I'll give you a good example. When Ghost was still the manager, he called two Kariobangi Sharks goalkeepers. Buire and the other one, I've forgotten his name. But this is, you're calling... Buiro, who's the, who was the number one for Kariobangi Sharks. Yeah. And now you're calling the reserve keeper of Kariobangi Sharks who doesn't even play. <laughs> the national team is supposed to have players who play week in, week out, and performing for their clubs to be able to represent the country. Yes. So this is one thing that, that's why I keep on emphasizing, integrity and transparency. There's nothing like that in the Kenyan football. 
<laughs> have you seen what you know the football stakeholders locally have said with regards to a possible ban? A former tactician for national team Arambi stars Jacob Ghost mm -hmm. uh, I think you might uh, be aware of each other, you know each other considering you coached Tasker back then and also the guys he caught, you know, is in charge of KCB. They say that you know a ban, possible ban from FIFA is not good for Kenyan football considering how it will you know affect the local based, you know, footballers. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you read from the same script? What do you think about their sentiments? Just repeat that again, sorry. The local fo football stakeholders led by coach Jacob Ghost mm -hmm. Mule and yeah. you know Zedeka Ziko Tieno yeah. are faulting, to some extent they are faulting the government over what is doing their crackdown and onslaught on, F on FKF saying that it, it amounts to a possible ban from FIFA. No, I, I don't even agree with that even one bit. Because at the end of the day, Jaku I respect Jacob Ghost Mule. He was my coach when I was at Tasca. I respect Zico. I've known him for a long time. But let's, let's just be realistic with ourselves. And this is one thing that I want to say. If you see a government trying to come and interfere with FKF or any organization, that means there's a problem. Yeah. They are not just coming to interfere for the sake of interfering. That means there's a problem. And for me, I look at people who are involved with football in Kenya. There's one thing that people are always afraid of doing, and that is calling out or saying the truth that's on the table, simply because they want to protect their name for who they are. That is not how it's supposed to be. Because remember this, and I keep on saying, this is about the players. Yeah. It's about the players at the end of the day. This is a job for them. These are people who are fathers, you know, they have families to take care of. We need to protect them to make sure that they get what they deserve. For example, I will use an example in the UK. Any player who's called to the national team in the UK and they represent the country, they get 2,000 pounds per game. That is almost 300,000 Kenyan shillings per game. Here in Kenya, a player is getting 750 Kenyan shillings. In terms of allowance. And we're in 2021 in terms of allowance. Just look at that comparison. And then you want to tell me that the people who are speaking about the government trying to interfere with FKF, they're doing the wrong, th that the government is doing the wrong thing? No, they're not doing the wrong thing. They've seen there's a loophole in Kenya, in football, and they need to interfere so that we can be, the players are getting what they deserve. How much money does Kenya get from FIFA after every four years? Approximately around 200 million Kenyan shillings, right? 50 million. Let's say 550 million, right? Yeah. That's after every four years. And how much does FKF get money from the government? Approximately about 50 million, right? Yes. Where is that money going to? And we don't have any youth pro programs that we can be able to feed. Because for me, uh, my own understanding, the way I live in the UK, is any youth team set up is supposed to support the national team. And that's why you see an example like England, the oldest player is 31 years old, and that's Jordan Henderson, Yeah. right? The rest are below 30 years of age, right? And all of them have played in the youth system up to where they got to the national team. Kenya, we don't have anything like that. Try and mention for me anything about the youth systems in Kenya. Then you want to tell me that if the government comes, tries to interfere with that, we are trying to say they are doing the wrong thing. The government is absolutely right what they are doing. They have to question the integrity of the FKF chairman on why Kenyan football and where all this money is going to. Again also, they, they need to be double standards. People need to stop playing double standards when it comes <laughs> to football in Kenya. Because when you want to go for an Africa Cup of Nations match in Comoros, you want money from the government. When you want to prepare for the Africa Cup of Nations and all that, you want facilitation from the government. When the government comes to audit you and ask for accountability for that money, then you say, according to the FIFA statutes, the government, we are an independent body. You realize that? Even if you read what the FIFA letters are saying from the Secretary General all the way, they're just vaguely worded. They're not talking about that. And you come to realize that, 
legislation of the game is key. Sports policy and law is key. And we need that because if we don't get tough laws, we don't get these laws that are going to help us manage the game, we are going to suffer a lot. Look at the Sports Act 2013 that uh, was uh, brought by the Constitution 2010. Sports federations and organizations were told, you need to comply to the Sports Act. Most of these federations did not want to comply to that. You see that when you are told, go there and comply to those uh, regulations, they do not want to comply to that. The CAF licensing and regulations came on board, and these are laws and regulations that can help us build the game. When all these federations were put into that uh, report card, they could not answer and get into that way of uh, laws and everything. They could not get their way into it. And they don't want, it's just also simple, they just don't want to follow the law. And when the law comes to you, you it just to bite you if you are not following it. And at the end of the day, in all these things that we are talking about, and the remedial into how we can help our football, which is in problems, these federations need to follow the law. It's as simple as that. The framework is there, the legislation is there, it is just sitting down and following it. And I won't be surprised that after the end of the six months, one of the things that Football Kenya Federation will be, it is that they have subscribed to the Sports Act of 2013. There has also been public outcry outside there over the, you know, the inclusion of members who form the caretaker committee with some people you know, uh, criticizing the move of inclusion of some people who are not you know, uh, footballers or they don't have football backgrounds. But I have seen also rejoinder and countering on the same with other people saying that the chairman of English Premier League, for example in Europe where you You've, you've prominently stayed, is not a football person, though he might have pursued something related to football development, but not necessarily that he played football. I don't know. M must you have played football to be a good manager of football? No, you don't. You don't have to have played football for you to be able to run a federation or be in charge of the football governing body. You don't have to. Remember this. These people are people who've gone to school. Yeah. They've gone to university. They've got their degree, they've got their masters, for them to be there where they are. So you don't have to be, you don't have to have ever played football for you to understand the game. Or you don't have to have ever played football for you to be able to run the game. And that's where the difference comes in. I don't know why people keep on saying that you have to be involved in football for you to understand football. There are people who are very, very good at, they can sit down, look at a match, and they analyze better than someone who's played the game. Yes. And that's one thing that is a reality. We can't, around, we can't run away from that. If you look at these top football English clubs in the UK, and if you look at their chief executives, they're not people who've played the game. They're people who've gone to school and, and studied their management. Their management. Yeah. They're and there for policies, absolutely. structures, yeah. everything. Yeah. And if you look at the level of integrity that these people have, that's why football in Europe is run so well. Because you cannot hide behind the seat. Or you can't be sitting somewhere as the chief executive and you get people around you who are just yes men. Uh, the, the, the question is, uh, you look at a club like Manchester United. It's named at the UK Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. You see that? So ask yourself, Rio Ferdinand who played for Manchester United, running an organization that is named at the Stock Exchange. Can that work? So you want to bring a player who played for FC Leopards or Gold, just because he was in the 100 meter square of the field of play, so he has the mind to run football in this, it cannot work. And just adding on to what he's saying, yeah. now let's talk, because me, I just like talking the way it is. Objectivity, yes. Absolutely. Majority of Kenyan footballers, including myself, we were not good in school. Right? Yes. yes. Many footballers who've played the game and some who are still playing the game, there are some who didn't even go to school. Not something that you can blame them, but because of the backgrounds of where they come from. True. Yes. Right? Majority of the people who've played the game too, there are some who are learned. But they don't have that football management or brain to run an organization. Yes. 
So those are the things that we need to try and see, that you can't come and say that so-and-so, because he's never played football before yes. or she's never played football before, she cannot do this. You know, yes. that's, that's totally wrong. And I feel everyone should be given an opportunity if they are able to perform in the, for the, respect, the, the respective duties that they are given. Yes. And that is how we can only improve as a country by not, by, by not pointing fingers, but taking responsibility, you know, of what we are supposed to do. I think we should also avoid judging too early, wait for six months to elapse before we judge the delivery and performance of the teams. I think the problem we have also as a country is we have been put in a situation where that everything that comes out, you must choose a side. Yeah. We have been put in a situation, it's like, it's like the American presidents. Everybody cares about what will the Democrats do, what will the Republicans Yeah, it's like that. In this country, we have put in a situation where Maxwell is running for president. You are either for him or not for him. There's no one who will say, okay, this one guy wants to run for the president. Let's look at him holistically and see what he can, he can do. Now, the committee has already been named. They have not even sat for one session. There's a budget already doing rounds in the media that it has already been normalized. They have been given a budget and it's working. And then you wonder, these guys have not even sat down for one meeting, even one sitting. Mm -hmm. So who is this giving them already, already giving them a budget? You see that? And already people are saying CS is wrong, the CS cannot be accountable and all that. But at the end of the day, the CS is she's just doing her job. Yeah. People have said, hey, that federation which you are ahead of, because at the end of the day she's the head of sports and mm -hmm. uh, in the country. People say, yes, you are the head of sports, you can see rugby, they are doing their Dubai Sevens and all that, Magical Kenya Open is coming and all that. But how come you are not going to the Africa Cup of Nations? How come our clubs are not performing at the CAF Champions League? How come when we go to the Confederations Cup is just the first round? Every day how come Gourmet and Debs Lopez is begging for money? Yeah. You see that? So she sits down and says, okay, there has to be a problem here. Where is the problem? Obviously, she cannot storm into the Federation and say, you guys have a problem, which she, at the end of the day, may not be privy to. She'll say, uh, sports registrar, I need these guys and these guys to go to that Federation and see what is happening there. The report will come to her desk. She will look at the report. She will consult and then make a decision. You see that? So this committee is already here. And already, people are left, people are right. No one is going to say, let, them let us give these guys a chance and see after six months what is going to happen. Because at the end of the day, the six months will come and go. And the same, same people will be like, you were given six months, what did you do? <laughs> Other that. people are saying that yeah. ban or no ban, need for reforms in football. <laughs> you tend to agree with that slogan. <laughs> you know one thing that um, that, I, that has baffled me for so many years. I stopped playing. I left Kenya in two thousand and six, December two thousand and six, when I was when I my last team was Tasca Football Club. Yes, and I've been following Kenyan football ever since, up to date. And we've we've always kept on mentioning about how things should be done in Kenya, how um, people, this person shouldn't work here, this person, person shouldn't do this. But at the end of the day, in my own opinion, since 2006, I've not seen any improvement in Kenyan football. Yes. We've never been below, and this, since I left Kenya, we've never been below 100 in the FIFA rankings. We've never been below. Yeah. That's over 10 years. And that is really alarming. And if you sit down, if you love football, and this is what I keep on telling my friends who we are involved in football, people who have um, these um, online interviews with people. If you really love football, call 
see the way it is. Don't, be, don't hide behind somewhere because you don't want to say something which is true just because of so and so will hate me or so and so wouldn't talk to me. Yeah. And that is what is killing our Kenyan football. Let me just be honest. Because people don't want to be responsible of whatever they are doing. Yeah. For example, today, Maxwell, if you, you're my friend and you're running FKF, if I see you're doing something wrong, you need to tell me. I need to tell you. And I'm not telling you because I hate you. I'm telling you so that we can improve as a country, we can improve as individuals, because each and everything that we do in life, if you're doing something wrong, and someone comes and tells you you're doing something wrong, that person doesn't hate you. Actually, that is love. Yeah. And that person is actually trying to tell you that this is how things are supposed to be done. FKF president, Nick Mwendwa, has he ever played football? No. He hasn't played football. Yeah. But now you find people who've played the game, who've been coaches, they are saying that you need to have played football in order for you to run football. football. That's just one example. And there are so many. Yeah. But does that mean that Nick Mwendo cannot run football? No. You don't have to play the game for you to be able to run something. Maybe he's gone to school to learn about sports development, and that's why he's in that position. Yeah. And he's also got the passion for football. And because he's, he's closely associated with Karubangi Sharks, which he started. Exactly. So let's stop putting, trying to blame the government for what they're trying to do now. The government is actually doing what they're doing for the best interest of these players. Yeah. If we are banned from football today, where will these players go? What will these players do? It will go back to my era, where you'll find players now, they are playing football, and at the same time, they are getting into gangs, they are getting into, into robberies. And, and also, I think also, we, we need not to put the problem of football in Kenya only to the Football Kenya Federation and also the government. The problem also comes even from us, the media people. We let no one tell you that we have worked in the help of football. I can categorically say to a larger extent that as a media also we have failed in, a, in a how to help Kenyan football grow. We are also a problem when it comes to Kenyan football because we have got scribes here who are for the presidency, who are brown envelope people and everything. And that does not help football at all. You look at a situation where that one might be a, an, an example, but also a situation where our coverage of the game, how we cover our sports in the country, is not that good enough. You look at uh, our bulletins at, at uh, 9 p.m. news, we don't give uh, local sports that much mileage unless there's something big that is happening around uh, the local sports industry. We don't industry. emulate on our counterparts from Britain. Yeah, we, see, we, we never don't do that. More Sarah, yeah. more, uh, he's called who? Uh, the athlete. He finished seventh and probably a Kenyan one has won the yeah. race. They will start with theirs before they yeah. <laughs> start, they come to meanwhile. Yes. For, for us, we don't do that. We don't give our sports that much needed coverage. Yes, they, there's this thing in media which they say there's what people need and there's what people want. You realize that our audience wants to watch our football, they also want to listen to our football and know, our, but for us, we don't give it to them. We, we don't take that strategy that we need to broadcast this game to the masses so that the masses can know it. And from our perspective, we'll be telling people that at the end of the day, what the audience wants is what we give them. And the audience wants English football. The audience wants Champions League football. But at the end of the day, we need also to push that narrative that as long as the English Premier League is there, we also have our own, which people should watch and everything. Let me, let me just come to that a bit. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I can't blame the media at all. And I'll tell you why. Yes. If, you, if you've already seen that we are not getting any benefits from advertising the Kenyan game, yeah. that is because of the way it is in shambles. You cannot waste your resources for doing that. The English Premier League 
they know it has a lot of money that is cutting across everywhere. Right? Yes. They are performing. The English Premier League is one of the best leagues in the world. How are you yeah, going? Money. It generates a lot of money. Yes. So How it boils you down to management and administration of Absolutely. the Absolutely. Yeah. So you can't even blame the Kenyan media at all. Tell me if you go for a Kenyan game or any Premier League match apart from Gormaya and FC Leopards, go to the stadium and just look at the numbers. Yes. You'll find there are less than 50 people in the stands. In a case it differs of a park or much. Absolutely. Yeah. So there's no way you can blame the media. I believe that if we had, if Kenyan football was being run well, and if you run something well, it will attract fans. Yes. If the league is performing, it will attract fans. You see, but if it's not performing and we are going backwards and backwards and backwards, no one would want to do anything with that. Yeah. I was watching, sorry, Maxwell, I was watching, um, is it the athletes? The, the under, is it, was it? One, the, one under 20 championships. Yes. yes. The one that was at Kasarani. The one which was at Kasarani. Yes. Did you see the spectators who were there? Yeah, that was the 2017 one. Yes. We had, uh, the when Kasarani was, was full. filled to the rafters. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That is athletics we are talking about. Yeah. And which is the best sport in Kenya that performs well? Athletics. Obviously. Athletics. Yeah. That is why it's able to even attract the outside media to speak about how good we are in sure. athletics. Yeah. So reality has to be told. And this is why I kept on saying about integrity. Yeah. We need to be able to run our game in the correct way for us to attract people to come back to the stadiums media to be able to cover our game professionally you know so that we can also have interest of other people realizing oh wait a minute kenya is not only recognized for athletics but also football and other sports and most kenyan football followers are looking forward to a scenario where you know they will witness again what happened a few years ago K Kariobangi Sharks was playing against everton and i think more international sports center kasaran was full yeah. it's because it's attributed to the packaging of the game, publicity, how you market the whole scenario. Corporate support too. Absolutely. And yeah. then you look at the caliber of the team that was coming to play. Yes. Kario Bangi Sharks. Let's let's not run away from this. Yes. It's playing Ever against Everton. It's Everton. If someone hears there's an English Premier League club coming to Kenya to play a local team, that would attract. It will attract a lot of fans. Yes. Even if you call a team like Watford. Or Norwich, yes. a team. The teams, first was Al City, actually. That yes, came. teams which are under teams which are fighting relegation, the stadium will be packed because yes. people would want to see. Hey, this is an English Premier League, but if you do that, let's say for example, you call Simba of Tanzania or Yanga, the stadium more than before. At some point, Nicholas Musonia, former Secretary General of Sekafa, complained. Kenya is playing against Sudan at Nyai National Stadium, yet people are at Nairobi West catching an English Premier League fixture between Arsenal and West Bromwich Albion. Mm -hmm. But I think, as we said, it boils down to, you know, value for your money. It has to be symbiotic. I'm paying 200 bob to watch a game between FC and Madara United. What am I gaining in return? It's not, it's not even about value for your money. It's about how you're seeing things are happening around the country. Yes. yes. Let's not lie to each other. Everyone who's involved in football, be it a coach, be it a footballer, they know the reality of the Kenyan game. Even the fans, they know the reality of the Kenyan game. They know that all we are doing in Kenya is not, nothing is being run well. So it's not going to attract anything. If you sit down, if you go to another country and speak about Kenya has a good football team, they will ask you, which one? Which one? Or name me one. Gor Maya, when they were playing Everton in Liverpool, I was there. Yes. So many Kenyan fans came to the stadium. And one thing that shocked me was even some Kenyans from Kenya traveled, traveled all the way to the UK to come and watch that match. To see Wayne Rooney taking on <laughs> Gor Maya. It wasn't even about <laughs> Wayne Rooney. It was about just... Gormaya playing Everton yes. in Liverpool. But now I was asking myself a question. If people can book flights from Kenya to come all the way to Liverpool to come and watch Gormaya 
and Everton. And yet here in Kenya, you can pay, I don't know how much it is from town to go to Kasarani or to Nyayo Stadium to go and watch a match. It's so difficult. But there are people, people who are very reluctant and absolutely. unwilling to do so. And that is because, and this is why I'm saying, let's call a spade a spade. Yeah. Our Kenyan football is in shambles, and it has been in shambles for so many years. I was absolutely shocked that we can let someone like Victor Wanyama retire from the game, and yet he's one of the best players in MLS. It's supposed to be the duty of FKF to try and convince Victor that we still need you in the team. Because we need experience in the team. We don't have that. Can you know, the government convince him to absolutely. Uh, come back? Absolutely. If we are doing things the correct way, we can convince Victor to come back. Victor is still young. He's, he's one of the best midfielders that Kenya has ever produced. And he's still playing at the highest level. Why should we let someone like him retire? And yet, we've got young players who are coming, who are now being brought to the national team, they're supposed to be looking up to him. He's supposed to be there yes. to show or to give that experience to people. And we are letting someone like that leave the game and retire. It shouldn't be like that. And he's retired because of his own personal reasons. True. But but if you try and dig deep or if you try and look at everything in a wider view, maybe he just got fed up. Yes, true. You know? But I believe he's someone who can still contribute a lot in the Kenyan game. People like, we should also try and include the former players, Mariga, Denis Oliech, Jamal Mohamed. These are players who've been very, very good for the national team. These are people that we should try and convince them to come back, you know, and try and help the Kenyan game. But they cannot come back and if it, because they are seeing the way our football is being run. When Arambe has lost, 5 nil against Mali away in an African Cup of Nations qualifier. Someone tweeted saying, at least Victor Anyama is vindicated. He was not part of the game. He would have been blamed for, you know, being responsible for the loss. No, but if it's, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Because uh, it, it's been there for so many years that if a professional base player comes to the national team and the national team loses, they will, people will start... It is his mistake. It is his mistake. And yet this, pers this person is also a human being who loves and has the passion to represent the country, but we are bashing them. We are supposed to be supporting them. And if you look at these professional best players, they've gone through a lot with the national team. Yeah. Majority of them have been paying their own tickets to come and play for the national team. Some of them even go into their own pockets to give money to the local best players. Yes. It shouldn't be like that, Maxwell. Yeah. We, that is why FKF is there to be able to make sure that they perform and they cover their responsibilities the way it's supposed to be. But in terms of logistics, we have to give it to Nick Mwendo. He's tried because there are no cases like it was during some Nyamwea era where players are traveling on their own in terms of footing their flight expenses and even allowances. But those uh, are basics. Those are just basics. Uh, in that you just <laughs> do, you have any, do you have any evidence about that? <laughs> I don't have. Exactly. Yes. So let's, let's, not, yeah. let's not just say something like that and yes. you don't have any evidence. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, because yeah. if you if you try and speak to the international base players who play, who've played outside under whatever regime, they have their own stories to tell. It's they only are, that they're not coming out in the open to say because of you know, the frustrations they might encounter along the way. Absolutely. The, the bad blood that comes out of there, you just leave it at that. See? So, so things are bad silently. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point. That's how it happens. If you talk to these uh, former footballers, you'll find, they, like you said, they paid their own uh, air ticket to come and play and they have not been refunded. They paid for their hotels and everything. And even up to recent, even Victor Mugubi, it came out like that. But I think for logistics, uniforms and everything, those are just basics for the Federation. You just need to provide them. There is no other way. There is no other way you can go around it. You just have to do it. So in your own assessment, what do you think is the way forward? The normalization committee or consensus or these two entities sitting together and agreeing I on... Think, I don't think there's, not, there's anything coming out of, uh, I think, uh, people coming to sit down and everything. I think the cabinet sector has already laid the ground for it. The 
the committees will start its job. They have been given six months. I think they gave their first directive saying the football will be off for two weeks. Then after that, we'll see them coming onto the office and they'll start running football for the next six weeks. I think, as everybody says that the, their job is well cut out for them, I think for the committee that is coming up, first they will be laying the ground for election, which is a, who, who is the next person who is going to lead football. And I think the best that this committee is going to give us is someone yes. with the knowledge and the know-how who can run football in the best way possible for the best interests of Kenya and the people who are there for football and the stakeholders and everything. Because now, one of the people that uh, the football has lost now is the corporate. The corporate sector completely has, uh, the, the Football Kenya Federation has lost their vote of confidence to the corporate sector. And this, the guy will come in will have to bring that confidence back and they need to give them back. Another one will be legislation, the way I said it earlier. After the six months, the next people are coming in to run football, they need to follow the law. The policies have been put there, the framework is there, the legislation is there, and they need to follow it to the letter. And that will help us in running our football into the next one. And also, the way we have seen that uh, the Football Kenya Federation hierarchy is being put into court, they are being prosecuted for their problems and everything, going forward, as long as you know that you are going to run for a sports uh, position in this country, know that if you make a mistake, if in your tenure, the Kenyans are going to experience bad governance, they are not going to experience accountability, transparency and integrity, they are going to get corruption from your office and everything. Just know that you will be prosecuted and you will go to jail. Simple as that. Dave, and Kenyan scenario, I don't know whether it has been emulated by other countries. I've seen what is happening. I think Egypt, Ghana did it. Nigeria is also following suit in terms of putting up a caretaker committee. Is it the general scenario in African continent? You know, one thing I think people are realizing is how much football is loved yes. in the world. You know, football is a game that so many people love. And I think now other countries that they've done it, like the countries you've just mentioned now, Kenya, we, they, they're just realizing that if you look at, um, for example, the English Premier League or so many teams in Europe, yes. they have so many good African players. Yeah. Right now, if you look at the Premier League, who's the best player in the Premier League right now. We are talking of Mo Salah yes, and Sadio yes. Mane. Yeah. These are African players. So try and imagine if we are able to run football in Africa the correct way, how many good players we can have playing, playing in overseas leagues. overseas leagues and coming to the national team, seeing the success on how Africa we can be a powerhouse when we go to tournaments, World Cup, you know? The, now people are realizing that football is a sport that is really loved. And I think me, the only thing that I can pray for is whoever is, a, whoever is going to become the next FKF president or anyone who's involved to do with anything with football, let's just try and have that integrity, transparency, and remember to do the work before they look at the money. Because let's not lie to each other. There's a lot of money in football, a lot of money. And that is why you're seeing these things happening. You know, people are being told to be accountable of where did this money go to. If we stop looking at the money and concentrate on the work, I believe Kenya, we can go so far and have a very good national team, have very good players coming out, playing in the, in the um, the local Premier League, players going overseas, you know? And that's the only thing. It's just about the money. And it's about that people are not ready to call out someone if someone is doing something wrong. And that is why now you see the government has come in because they've realized there's something wrong that is happening in our federation. If everything was being run correctly, and people are accountable for everything that they are doing and there's transparency, there's integrity, the government wouldn't be involved. 
even a single minute. As a former footballer, do you think your counterparts have also uh, done their best in terms of calling out the government, calling out the federation in terms of a mess? I don't think so. And this is one thing that I was saying to you. Me, I've, I've known a few players who are very vocal and speak out their minds. That is Jamal Mohamed, Bonfe Sambani, and those are the only, I think, That's I countable. and let's say Bramwell, Yes. Yeah. you know, those are the only people that I've heard they can speak openly. Harold Ndege. Harold Ndege, actually, yeah. the former Tasca yes, uh, yes. defender. Yeah. You know, there are only a few players who can call out and say this is wrong. And simply because, because players know each other, players know the people who are running the game in the country, and because you don't want to be in the bad books of someone just because you call them out, people are afraid of doing that. And that is where we are going wrong. By calling out someone, it's not because you hate them. It's because you're seeing that there's something wrong being done and you'd like to educate someone or pass on knowledge to that person. And that is what is happening. If you look, for example, in the English Premier League, let's say the Glazer family who are, yeah. who are the owners of Manchester United. If you look at, if Manchester United play badly or they've had um, a run of games which are bad, what do people do? Even protest. Exactly. We are they are running our club well. Exactly. Yeah. They are calling out the owners. And they, are they calling out the owners because they hate the owners? No. It's because they realize that there's something wrong that is happening in their club where fans are spending a lot of money. Fans have got a say. Absolutely. They have monthly subscription with which they remit. Absolutely. Do you want to tell me something like that cannot be able to be done in our country here in Kenya? It can. It it's can. possible. It's possible. And those are the things that if you try and look at how football clubs are being run outside the country, how national teams are being run outside the country, and you try and look in your own country how football is run, it's alarming. It's alarming It's indeed. very alarming. It's just like the exam example I've given you, Maxwell. Yes. From 2018, each England player gets 2,000 pounds to represent their country, but that money goes to charity. That is because if you look at these players, they're being paid millions of shillings in their respective clubs. And that for them, it's an honor to wear the national team uh, jersey. Yes. And if you look here in Kenya, the other day I was listening to Mariga saying that during their time, they used to get 2,500 being in camp. But now players are getting 750 Kenyan shillings. So I'm trying to ask myself, are we going backwards <laughs> or are we are going forwards? We're getting retrogressive. Absolutely. Like so, what happened, Serbia played Portugal, and I think they won. Serbian president had promised that in the event they beat Portugal, they will be given, you know, uh, good amounts of money per player, of which it was done, and I think the federation decided that money should go to the hospitals and, you know, pay yeah, for drugs. Said, yeah. yeah. The captain mm -hmm. said that we sat down and said, if we get this money, we are going to give it to the children. We yeah. are playing and for the Serbian them children. themselves in the event that that situation was happening in Kenya. I know that wouldn't have happened. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. Even me, when I had Mariga speaking about it, I was actually happy Mariga is speaking for the players. Yeah. Yes. You will not find a player who's in the national team coming out to say, this is how much money we are getting. But Mariga came and said, these players are getting 750 Kenyan shillings, which is not fair. Yeah. If during our time we were getting 2,500, and now they're getting 750 Kenyan shillings, which player do you think in the national team would have said something like that? Yeah. No one, because they are scared. Because if you come out and speak of something like that, you will not call, be called up the next, for, the next, <laughs> for the next game or the next national team camp. Yes. Well, it's been a fantastic conversation this particular afternoon. David Ali played for Tusk and KCB, and of course he's joining us this particular afternoon to talk about status of Kenyan football with regards to the uh, stalemate and you know, tussle happening between Football Kenya Federation and Ministry of Sports. So we've seen... Uh, the court proceedings, I think ruling is set for 25th uh, with prosecutions having been given time to, you know, table, uh, formidable 
charge against the federation failure to which I think the case will be dropped. So we're paying close attention and development to the situation and see how it pans out. Dev, thank you for coming through. Before I let you go, bro, you're parting short your final submissions on the show? Um, yes, for me, my f it's just everything that I've been preaching and saying every day. I just wish that our football game could be run better. And I just pray for the people who are going to become the next FKF president or any football committee or anything to do with football. Let's just think about the players first before we think about our pockets. And let's stop being greedy. Player interest should be our priority. Absolutely. Player interest should be our priority. Let us run the game with a lot of integrity, transparency, and we will see good things coming out from Kenyan football. If we don't have those two on the table, I'm sorry, nothing will ever be good for Kenyan football. Thank you for coming through and hope to continue hearing from you in terms of your voice and concerns which you've been expressing with regards to the manner in which football is being administered locally. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for having me. Touchline is the show. Of course, we're taking a short break. We're still on until 3 o'clock. Don't go away. Stay tuned.